Hi, this is Arzu Mountain Spirit coming to you from beautiful Punta Gorda, Belize. And I wanted to share this with you today. Today we're going to be talking about the Pisabed. Also in Garifuna, it's called the Ganibi Sea. And this is, this is him right behind me. Um, and this is his gorgeous flower. So we're going to be learning so much about this plant. And at the end of the video, uh, you're going to see a lot of different pictures from different angles of what the pisa bed looks like so that you can recognize it when you walk around, wherever you go. How will you recognize it when you see it in the wild? Well, the Ganibisi is an erect tropical annual herb and it has leathery compounded leaves and it can grow up to be about six feet tall as taller than most people it is a perennial shrub and the spokes where the flowers come out of are waxy and yellow they look a little bit like a candle and that's one of its acquired names um, it's called also called candle bush it's from that candlestick that the blossoms open. Now the large leaves are bilateral and are symmetrically opposed and they fold together at night so they go to sleep. The fruit is in a little pod, very small seeds. It's got a square shape. They're small and square. The Ganibisi is indigenous to the Caribbean and it's found in secondary vegetation, mostly around where it's wet and around riverbanks. A lot of people have them popping up in their homes, uh, and sometimes they don't know what they are, so they just chop them down. They think it's a weed. But if they allow this plant to grow, they certainly never grow to regret it because it's a gorgeous plant. It attracts the most beautiful butterflies. It definitely has butterfly attracting properties because when you put this plant in your garden, when you let it grow, it will attract very specific butterflies because of its sulfur content. It attracts the orange barred sulfur caterpillar. Sulfur um, butterflies. It is always flowering. I love it in the garden. I absolutely love this plant in the garden because it's always flowering. And it flowers on time, starting at the beginning of the year, and then it just keeps reflowering, taking a few breaks in between. Very short breaks in between. It's a, it's a gorgeous plant. The leaves are probably the most important part about this plant. This plant carries an incredibly powerful medicine in its leaves. Now, the flowers and the seeds also contain this medicine, but traditionally uh, healers have used the leaves. It carries very powerful medicine for us human beings. The leaves alone have laxative properties. They're also antimicrobial and they're antifungal. The antifungal properties of Ganibisi are incredibly powerful. They are so powerful, it's sometimes difficult to explain. For example, um, there really is no known cure for athlete's foot fungus, and even fungi like uh, jock's itch. But that's a very type of fungus that Ganibisi loves to tame. I was at the airport last week and I all of a sudden I smelled something really really bad like really really bad cheese like rotten to the core I've never smelled cheese that bad actually um, and I happened to glance over and notice that the man sitting next to me had removed his shoes and I really felt for him because I know his feet were hurting and, and I know his feet needed the air but I, I needed the air too and I thought to myself if I had some Ganibisi here, I would just give it to him because that's the very type of fungus that a Ganibisi foot bath would take care of. You, you would just use it a couple of times, maybe three times. It would definitely tame the athlete's foot fungus. It can also be used in a bath uh, for jock's itch. There are other 
remedies that can be gotten from the leaf taken as a uh, tea. You don't have to have access to the tree. You can actually get the dried leaf powder. You can get it online or contact an herbalist. I'm sure there are many ways you can get it. Or you could even grow it yourself. It's the flowers of the Ganibisi plant that my grandmothers used to fix the spiritual cleansing bath called the agoni. The flowers have antimicrobial properties. They also have the energetics of the color yellow. They have the capacity to cleanse the aura and to raise the vibrational frequency in that color. We take the flowers and we mix them with other leaves and, and mash them up so that they infuse their medicine into the baths. Also have the same properties as the leaves. And it's the flowers and the, the flower petals that my grandmothers used to make the agoni. Agoni is a very, very special Garifuna spiritual bath. It's a healing bath. And we take it either at the beginning of the year or for making a fresh start or if we're coming out of mourning, if we're putting suffering down, or if we're preparing to offer a ceremony, whether it be for the ancestors or for healing, for any, any kind of purpose. It's the bath that we take to purge our entire auric field. And wouldn't you know it, 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 what we're using is a flower that has antimicrobial, antifungal, antiparasitical, and laxating properties in our baths. How did our ancestors know? I don't know. But it's just recently that science has found these things out, and yet our ancestors have been using this plant for the same purpose, for the same baths, for thousands of years. In our Garifuna tradition, we utilize the Ganibisi plant both internally and externally. We have remedies that we make from it to take internally and then other remedies that we use externally, like in the bath or in a salve or in an oil. For example, for skin diseases like eczema, scabies, um, itching, uh, even ringworm. The Ganibisi is also called a ringworm bush. And in the tr treatment of fungal diseases, we use it externally. It's more of an external application. And then in cases like parasites or um, gastrointestinal problems, digestive problems, uh, purges, cleansings, um, for those, we take it internally as a tea. I would even hesitate to use the word laxative to describe the actions of the Ganibisi plant because it's so gentle. It is one of the most gentle cleansers that you can take. In fact, you take it um, before you go to bed. Uh, the best way to take this remedy, at least the way my grandmother taught me, is to make a tea. Uh, if you're using it for expelling parasites or for cleaning out your, your intestines and just flushing out all of your, your organs of elimination, you would take a nice strong brew right before you go to bed, so it's the last thing that is in your system. And it works while you're sleeping. Remember, the plant also sleeps at night. It folds its leaves together and it goes to sleep. And that seems to be when uh, the plant is doing the most work, where its agents are doing the most work. So while you are sleeping, the Ganibisi is inside your intestinal system, putting all of the parasites to sleep. And in putting them to sleep, it dislodges them from your intestinal wall. And the Ganibisi is in there scrubbing. Just imagine a whole bunch of little guys just scrubbing your system and dislodging all of that pathogenic matter. So that when you wake up in the morning, you have a nice, smooth bowel movement. 
it'll probably be the best one you've ever had, and it'll probably be the most foul-smelling you've ever had. And on that note, I hope that the people, I'm asking the people who have taken the Ghani BC before, to please write in your comments and, and let us know. Oh, if you're, <laughs> no need to be embarrassed. We're all, we're all people here. So just let us know how it worked for you. We use the Ganibisi, no, rather we take the Ganibisi to address just about most uh, stomach problems or any problems with your digestion um, when you're not pooping properly. Uh, this is a great plant to, to take uh, when you're not pooping properly because it really sets everything pretty much straight. The best time to take it is during the full moon. And of course, you take it at night and you only take it once. And you would do that for seven days. Um, depending on how, how toxic you are, if you have a nice evacuation the first uh, two or three days, you really don't have to extend it for seven days. But the traditional protocol is that you would take it on the full moon, and uh, you would take it once at night before you go to bed for seven consecutive days. We also use the Ganibisi tea for weight loss, for getting rid of excess water, uh, for uh, helping to control the cravings for sugar. It's um, a very good tea for gaining mastery over what you put in your mouth. And the thing is that once you have uh, this cleansing with, with this herb, you naturally start to crave the things that, that are good for your body. We also use it in traditional healing to alleviate asthma symptoms in the presence of chest colds, like when you have a lot of mucus in the chest. Uh, it's great for relieving mucus and also for when you have bronchitis. So anytime you're looking to get rid of mucus in the body, the Ganibisi is also an excellent herb to take. It's the crushed leaves that we would use when we're treating skin infections like um, fungi, um, scabies, um, or just even overall itching. You would juice the leaves and it's the juice of the leaves that you would apply to the affected area. But you can also get, I don't want you to freak out. It's like, I don't have leaves to juice. Don't worry about that. You can get the dry leaf powder. Some people, um, some herbalists powder the flower and the seed mixed with the leaf. That's great if you can get it. But the leaf uh, by itself, just a powdered leaf by itself would be enough. So you would use this leaf powder to make your tonic, to make your tea, or to infuse in an oil to use as a salve, or to mix uh, with a lotion and emulsify it um, so that you can apply it to your skin. There are many ways that you can take it. You can put, you can put it in your bath. The leaves and the flowers are chock full of medicine, but there is also a concentrated type of medicine in the seeds. And it's the crushed seeds that we use uh, when we are doing exclusively, when we're exclusively expiating parasites. Like if there's a serious parasitical infestation, then it's the seeds that would be used in the treatment. In our tradition, in Garifuna tradition, we use the roots of the Ganibisi plant or the Ganibisi bush. We use the entire root in the practice of midwifery. A lot of the midwives use the roots to administer for an afterbirth or a, a uterine purge or even after a miscarriage. It kind of flushes out the uterus and, and tones it right back up just the same way it works with the other organs. Plus, it cleans out mucus uh, from the uterus. Oh my goodness, can you believe we've run out of time? Oh my God, this is Arzu Mountain Spirit. I've been talking to you today uh, about the Ganibisi plant and all the marvelous features that it has and all of the healing that it brings to humanity. Listen, right now, you can like this video and you can also subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really hope you've enjoyed our little tidbit on this plant, and I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you again when we'll be discussing other plants that heal us. 
This is Arzu Mountain Spirit saying much love. Bye for now.